Hello and welcome to Whining About AWS Cost Management. I'm recording this in the late evening, but if it makes you feel any better, you can pretend that I'm doing this at 7.30 in the morning and that's when I start drinking. Wouldn't that explain a lot? Now let's dive into what happened around reInvent 2023 over in the world of cost optimization and management. First, Biggest thing here is they redesigned so much of the layout for the billing and cost management home. There is a single pane that you can look at and see all of the stuff that you might possibly care about. It's wonderful. Uh, easy way to demonstrate this is if you click on Cost Explorer, it's apparently no longer designed by Germans, where it opens a new window for absolutely no apparent reason. That's awesome. It does pop up this annoying thing that hopefully will be gone in a few days unless that deadline slips. When you build policies that have to speak to the old way and new ways of doing things, this becomes impossible to avoid. While we're hanging out in Cost Explorer, something else that changed is that you can now get history on this stuff back to 38 months, which is kind of amazing. They don't really like to show it over here. Although they do now. Wonderful. Three years. Awesome. Well, I grab that. Whack. Apply. And sure enough, multi-year data is not enabled. Awesome. But we can change those preferences later. Once you opt in, it will slowly and luxuriously backfill. I highly recommend it because when you make a mistake, we don't like to reevaluate them. It's easier to look forward than back. But you can learn a lot. They who forget history are condemned to repeat it, especially where the AWS bill is concerned. While we're hanging out over in the cost world, they also wound up launching the Cost Optimization Hub, which unifies a whole bunch of recommendations and ideally gets them not to disagree with one another. We pop into the View Opportunities, which is a good line, and it shows in my case I've got three things. The first is it wants to downscale my development instance, but I didn't start this whole company so I could be resource constrained. No. The second recommendation is to buy a reserved instance for an RDS thing. I'm telling myself the same thing that you tell yourself and it's always a lie, we're still dialing in what that workload looks like. So we're going to wait and see before we commit and two years will go past and we'll have done nothing about it. Also notice just how far it takes to scroll here. UI is hard, but this feels like I'm going out into the hinterlands to wind up doing the scrolling dance. And the last thing is the sort of thing I would spend weeks optimizing. It's one of the Lambda functions that helps me write my weekly newsletter. And if I wind up giving it just a skosh less memory, it'll save me a penny a month. Is it worth it? Is the juice worth the squeeze on that? Absolutely not. Am I going to obsess over it anyway? <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, no way to show it in the console, but the free tier also now gets a API that you can use to figure out how close you are to exceeding free tier limits. But who exactly is that for? If you're writing custom code and understand the nuances of this well enough to write that code against the API, are you really in the free tier? Do you care about it? Maybe, maybe not. And the last thing that I think is rather spectacular for some folk and boring for the rest of us is this whole world of the Kerr version 2. Everything historically is now called the legacy Kerr export. And if we want to build it, you can now create the modern Kerr 2.0, which stands, of course, for cost and usage report, second edition. And you can wind up including individual resource IDs and you can start splitting cost between things. This is great for folks who have specific needs at a certain point of scale. For the rest of you, it'll just disappear into this ever-growing menu off to the side. But we'll take what we can get. And that's what happened last week. Well, I suppose last year in AWS's commerce platform team. And they held most of that to release it until around reInvent. Hopefully this helps someone out there because this is frankly the stuff that I care the most about out of everything they wound up pelting our way out of what looks like a massive set of corporate slingshots.